So my SAP screen is visible to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So in the last class actually, uh, we are trying to post one invoice. While posting an invoice, actually that invoice uh, was having some payment terms. Okay. Uh, that payment terms was not generated in the last class. So what was the problem? Let us see. Uh, okay, fine. Let us go to uh, the uh, making of a generation of one invoice and uh, from that invoice, just a minute. Okay, fine. So you know in accounts payable, uh, the straightforward uh, transaction code is FB60. That is used for accounts payable okay so let us change our company code uh, our company code was 7200 okay so in my company code I have to choose my vendor so this is my vendor let us have the invoice date suppose the invoice date is 27 12 2022 okay see in this fb60 actually we have to uh, make a thorough understanding of the screen first this particular screen is divided into two area this top area this area is regarding your details of the vendors there are different different tabs of course one is basic data tab another is payment tab details tab tax tab, notes tab, there are different different tabs. If uh, when I will cover the TDS process withholding tax, then you will find that another tab is also added here. Okay, so the tab will be more. When we will discuss the GST procedures, then it will be addressed under this tax tab. But now we are uh, discussing about the payment terms. That means your uh, uh, cash discount okay every time when you are passing an invoice the by default payment term will come what is the by default payment term by default payment terms means the payment term which is already defined in the vendor master let us open the by default payment term actually that by default payment terms can be changed by the user because a single payment term cannot be uh, used for uh, processing all invoices because you know that uh, discount or payment terms it always changed as per the contract between the uh, party as well as the company time to time the payment terms changed but normally the company codes who are uh, uh, having the SAP system they always link a by default payment term in the vendor master let us see the vendor master for creation of vendor master, we know there is a transaction code called FK01 and FK02 is the change of payment term. Let us go to the change of payment term, FK02. In this FK02, I have to put this vendor name. I have created only one vendor. Let us see that vendor, Trident Industries Limited. See, there can be a certification question regarding how many uh, different areas are there in a vendor master actually there are two areas it's showing one is general data another is company code data and in the certification questions it may be asked uh, where do you find the correspondence related information whether it is in the general data tab or it is a company code data tab company code area like when you are creating any gl account there are three tabs normally one is general, another is control, another is create oblique bank oblique interest tab. You know it very well. When you create a GL masters under FS00, normally you found three types of tabs. Okay. Similarly, when you create a vendor master, here it is showing two tabs. Why it is showing two tabs? Actually, there are three tabs because this is a FI vendor this vendor has nothing uh, relating to your purchasing organization okay purchasing organization 
uh, is a different area which we will discuss when we will cover the integration integration means uh, when we will do the configurations of material management then we will create the basic settings of the purchasing area and that purchasing area related information will be also assigned with the vendor master as it is a pure fi vendor because my integration will be discussed later on so here only two areas are showing okay so this is the payment transaction tab right the payment transaction tab is there in the general data tab general data area as well as the same is in the payment transaction area okay i am just selecting this two at both the places put enter see this is this is also relating to payment transactions because any vendor to whom you are uh, enrolling or where you are cre creating any vendor master the vendor must be having a bank account uh, and everything relating to your uh, the uh, bank in which you will remit the money the details will be there as well as there is also another area where you have to fill up regarding the suppose you are electronically pay the vendor then some informations are there in the in this area also let us click on the next screen right so in the next screen see the by default payment term is 7200 okay so 7200 payment term i have created and i have assigned it with the vendor master let us come to this screen in this screen this vendor is assigned with the by default payment term what i have created in the last class the payment term is 7200 if i click on the payment uh, uh, tab it is showing that 55000 down payment is there don't worry just click on enter if i click on enter it is asking me the text which is mandatory just give the text and put enter again it is showing Uh, just click on continue see if i click on the payment terms tab it is showing me the by default payment term okay but this by default payment terms can be changed by the user here why it is coming by default because this is assigned to the vendor master so it is automatically coming but i have already told you that this payment term cannot be static okay so time to time the payment term changed here the payment term is if the vendor is going to if uh, we pay the vendor within 15 days then the vendor will allow me 10% cash discount from 16th day to 30th day 5% cash discount will be given by my vendor and my payment has to be made within 45 days so from 31st to 45 days no discount will be offered but in the last class this particular thing was not coming why this thing was not coming let us open the session what was the problem uh, due to who is this was not coming let us go to the field status group and field status variant which is assigned to the sundry creditor gl account so obc4 is the transaction code okay so obc4 here is our field status variant i select my field status variant and click on the field status group okay then uh, normally i use this one G, g001 right and this g001 is assigned to the gl masters so let us open the gl master the gl master sundry creditor okay so let us select the sundry creditor now uh, sundry creditor this one right so click on the control data tab uh, sorry click on the create oblique bank oblique interest tab here g001 is there whenever any field status group will be assigned here automatically it it is having a impact on this area because this area is is the area where vendor related information is put like the vendor number actually the vendor number i have given but 
you know this accounts payable is based on the subsidiary GL concept. So this subsidiary ledger vendor number is automatically assigned to the GL account. Which GL account? The GL account is sundry creditors. Okay. So in the sundry creditors G001 is there. Let us go to the field status group G001. I am selecting this and I will click on the field status or I will just double click here. Right. While I put the double click there are different different areas. There is an area called payment transaction. Right. In the payment transaction, this payment term must be at the optional entry. Previously, it was suppressed. Okay. Suppose I am suppressing. Suppose I suppress this one and save. Right. Let us see what happened. I am suppressing it under the G001. And this G001 is assigned here, sundry creditors. Right. So I have already suppressed the payment term. Then see what is the impact. I am coming out of this transaction. Okay. Again I am going to FB60. While I go to the FB60, I am giving the vendor number. I am giving the vendor number. I am giving the invoice date. Right. I am giving the text also. I am giving the amount say 10,000. If I click on the payment tab, it will ask me down payment is there. It is the normal feature. If any down payment uh, or advance payment to this vendor is there, then automatically this notification will come. Okay. See what happened here. Though I click on the payment tab, is the payment terms appearing here? No, it is not appearing here. Why it is not appearing here? Because I have already suppressed the payment terms here itself. Let us go to 7200. Click on the field status group. Again click on the G001. Click on the payment transaction. See, I have suppressed the payment term here in the field status group G001. So as I have suppressed this, so directly it is having an impact on this area. So that was the thing what happened in the last class. So in your case, Whenever you will do the practice, be sure that here the payment terms is not suppressed. It may not be required, but it should be optional. Optional means it will definitely come to the screen, but it is up to us whether we put the value or we do not put the value. But suppress is not required because I have to demonstrate the payment terms, discount terms, how it is uh, working how automatically discount is calculated so it should be always optional and click on save okay once i click on save then automatically my z001 which is which is assigned to my sundry creditor it is also automatically working let us see here in the sundry creditor actually in the vendor master it is finally linked with the sundry creditor so G001 is the field status group and I have already made the payment term as optional. So now if I go to and pass the invoice again, suppose I am passing the invoice again, slash n FB60. <coughs> now I put the vendor number, I put the invoice date, posting date is by default coming that is the today's date, I am putting the amount say 10,000. I am putting the text and I try to go to the payment term. Okay, this message will come because there is a down payment and click on the execute. See, now my payment terms is appearing. What is the payment term appearing? This payment term is the by default payment term which is assigned in my vendor master. So let us see the payment terms from the vendor master. Let us see what is the payment term which is by default assigned. See, this is the payment term which is by default assigned. So even if by default payment term is coming here, but the user at the time of passing the invoice, the user can use the payment term, change the payment term as per its own will. Right. Suppose 
I want to change the payment term as triple zero two and put enter. Once I put enter, then it will show a alert message. Terms of payment changed because the by default payment term was appearing there, and I changed it. It is a alert message, but it is not a error message. The user has all the rights to change the payment term when the situation demands. See, the payment term triple zero two, fourteen days credit is allowed. Where I will get three percent discount from fifteenth day to thirty eighth day, I will receive two percent discount, and from thirty first to forty five days, no discount is allowed by vendor. So finally, my due date is tenth February two thousand twenty three. How it is tenth February? So baseline date is twenty seventh December two thousand twenty two. So from this baseline date, forty-five days is added. So automatically, the final due date is showing as tenth February two thousand twenty-three, right? So this is. Sir, question, sir. Yes. Sir, from where the baseline date is come? Uh, whenever I created a payment term, let us go to the creation of payment term screen. There, I have uh, already. I am going to the payment terms. Uh, so these are the payment terms. Let us go to the payment term screen. I have. I will decide what is the baseline date. Baseline date means the date from which the due date will be calculated. So let us go to and see. Previous class, I have already created my payment term. There, I have obtained the baseline date. that is the posting date uh, let us go to the financial accounting let us go to the accounts receivable and payable go to the business transactions then uh, i will go to uh, let us go to outgoing invoices and credit memos then maintain payment terms see so here all the payment terms are appearing how many payment terms are there 60 numbers of payment terms are there let us go to my payment term so so this is my payment term so just double click on this payment term in this payment term i have already selected the posting date radio button what is the meaning of posting date radio button that means the due date will be calculated from the posting date so uh, here it is 002 let us see the 002 payment terms there i will show you how there i will show you how the date is being decided so 0002 that payment term i am using so let us go to that payment term click on the position button 0002 so just double click here see this is the payment term where the baseline date is document date normally in my case the document date and posting date is same suppose say i change the document date okay so here the posting date and document date or invoice date you can say it document date or invoice date those are same suppose i change and see suppose again go to fp60 let us see all the pros and cons suppose my document date is Say twenty eighth. That that means the vendor has printed the invoice, prepared the vendor invoice on twenty eighth December. But I am posting this on twenty seventh December in my SAP system, right? So let us see how the baseline date will be decided. See here the baseline date will be twenty eighth December. See, uh, I am putting the text which is mandatory, putting some value here. Let us go to the payment term. See, uh, my payment term by default coming seven two zero zero. In seven two zero zero, I have decided that baseline date will be from the posting date. But let us choose the payment term triple zero two and put enter. so in the 0002 say 
ट्रिपल जीरो जीरो टू द बेस्ट लाइन डेट इज द डॉक्यूमेंट डेट दैट मीन्स माई टर्म्स ऑफ द पेमेंट दैट इज फोर्टीन डेज थर्टी डेज थ्री परसेंट टू परसेंट इट विल बी डिसाइडेड फ्रॉम द डॉक्यूमेंट डेट नॉट द पोस्टिंग डेट लेट अस सी द कर्सर इज मूविंग टेकिंग सम टाइम टू री चेंज द पेमेंट टर्म्स Let us put here another transaction, B sixty. Same vendor. Suppose this is twenty December. Try to put another one. Click on the payment terms. Here it is by default coming. Let us choose the triple zero two and uh, put enter. See. Now the baseline date is calculated from the twenty December. What about that previous one? That previous one is still processing. Okay, but this is this is fine. So here I change the payment term, right? Once I pay, see uh, change the payment term triple zero two. As per the triple zero two, what is the mandate? The mandate is here is triple zero two. The mandate is the baseline date will be the document date. here in this transaction what is the document date not this one this one what is the document date or invoice date so document date is 20th december 2022 right and here i change the payment term 0002 instead of 7200 who is i had created and in 0002 the baseline date will be from the uh, invoice date or the document date okay that's why it is calculating like this so again change my payment term in my payment term let us post the transaction so this is my payment term okay just put enter okay when i put enter again the baseline ch uh, date changed because in the configuration i have already done it it is still processing The, this screen is still processing, but this screen is fine. So now the payment term has been changed. Let us post the transaction in this screen. Parallelly, I have opened two numbers of screens, but one screen is still processing. Another screen, another FB sixty screen is fine. So let us post the transaction. So uh, what was the problem previously? There was a problem in G zero zero one. that is the field status group in that field status group when you do the practice of payment terms be sure that in g001 the uh, optional entry must be there payment terms must be optional if it is suppressed then this payment term will not be there okay it will not come to the screen what i i have already demonstrated so come to the second line i have already told you that this area of the screen is regarding the details of your transactions header data basically the header data and uh, your vendor related informations and this is the line item so in the line item i am selecting a gl account that is expenses account okay so let us have the expenses account that is inventory raw material fi the bill is directly coming so put the star the 10000 will be copied automatically put the text text is plus and put enter so after putting the enter then what happened here the balance is showing as zero that means the debit is exactly equal to credit now i can go to the simulate button so this is the simulate button and uh, the entry is inventory raw material account debited to trident industries limited safe so this document is posted now 
and see the document FB03. Uh, so last document number is automatically coming. Click on enter. So when I uh, click on the enter, I see the display document data entry view. I have already told you that there are two views available. One is entry view, another is general ledger view. Entry view means how I posted the transaction. That was the view, right? How I posted the transaction? While posting the transaction, sundry creditor GL was never used because that was not required at all. That will be automatically populated because my subsidiary ledger that is Trident Industries Limited is already linked with the sundry creditor GL account. This is not a GL account. This is the subsidiary GL account, uh, subsidiary ledger below the GL account, party wise, vendor wise. And this line item shows the subsidiary ledger information and this line item shows the general ledger information. If I click on the general ledger view, what happens? The view changed. How the view changed? Here, the two numbers of line item shows you the detail information what are the GL accounts used in the second line item there is no change because this is a GL account but the first line item the change happens because in the previous screen entry view the name of the vendor was coming but that is not a GL that is a subsidiary GL as I have clicked on the general ledger view so the name of the vendor vanishes and automatically the GL account of sundry creditor is coming. If I again click on the entry view, then it will show like this. So this is regarding the entry view and the GL view. Now let us try to clear the transaction, right? Today I have posted the transaction and uh, I have sufficient time to pay the vendor. Suppose I decided to pay the vendor tomorrow itself. Okay, so today is 27th. Suppose I want to pay manually to the, I want to clear the vendor on 28th. So whenever I want to clear the vendor on 28th by payment, definitely I'm entitled to get discount from the vendor. So let us go to and see how the system is automatically calculated the discount amount it doesn't have to calculate manually because I have entered the terms of payment in the SAP system itself, SAP software itself. SAP software know it that from the baseline date, that is from the document, uh, from the posting date, due date will be calculated. SAP is already having a clock inside. So regarding the dates, the SAP is well aware of. Regarding the terms of the payment, the SAP is well aware of. So how much discount I am going to get, SAP knows it very well. But whenever I will try to clear that invoice, system will calculate the amount of discount which I am entitled to get. And the discount, GL account of discount received account will be automatically populated. So let us see it. Click on the F-53, right? <coughs> Suppose, now it is 28th actually this is a few future date today is not 28th tomorrow is 28th but uh, it will accept because i have opened all the posting periods simultaneously so this is regarding just a minute 28th december 2022 sorry 28th december 2022 this is the document type KZ. KZ means payment document. Select the bank data. Bank data means you have to select the bank GL. <coughs> so, uh, this is the bank account, say 2 lakhs. We don't know how much amount we are going to pay because I also cannot calculate manually how much discount I am entitled to get. So document date is 28, posting date is 28 and uh, value date also I can change or may not change. Let us change the value date also 28. 
now put the amount as 1 rupee okay i will change it later on i will go to and see how much discount it is all, all automatically calculating text is clearing i am coming to the account here i will choose the open item i will choose the subsidiary ledger and click on process open item it is asking document date is in future don't care for that right see there are many items which is coming but out of these many items only last two numbers of items here in the discount column it is populating the discount amount that is 1000 rupees in this invoice 1000 rupees in this invoice so what is the discount percentage that is 10% right because within 15 days i am entitled to get 10% discount so the system is automatically populating the discount and calculating how much discount will be allowed let us change the date and see what will happen suppose i again come back suppose i want to pay it after 15 days right so 27th is the baseline date okay suppose i prefer to pay it on 28th january 2023 so 28 28th january 2023 right and uh, here also bank gl amount i am putting one i don't know how much discount will be allowed value date also i am changing 28th january 2023 <coughs> this is the subsidiary gl that is trident industries limited click on process open item uh, it is asking it is just giving me alert message because it is a future date so i click on enter just i click on enter okay text is missing so i am just putting the text click on enter see in this last item it is offering me 500 rupees discount but in this line item it is not offering me any discount why let us see it this is the uh, document number 6012 this is the document number 6013 this document is passed on 15th december right uh, and this document is passed on 20th december so here it is calculating the payment terms where i am not entitled to get 10% but as the 15 days period is already over so automatically the system is calculating 5% discount on this 10000 so 500 rupees is there but for this invoice 6102 let us see that invoice 6012 what is the payment terms 6012 let us see the document slash n fb03 so let us see the 6012 document okay so double click on the first line item see this is the payment terms <coughs> so here uh, within 15 days i will be having 10% discount and within 30 days i am entitled to get 5% discount and after 30 days there will be no discount and within 45 days definitely i have to pay the vendor otherwise the pay will, the vendor will the vendor may issue legal notice so what is the blind date blind date means baseline date the baseline date is 15th december 2022 but i was trying to make the payment for this particular invoice on 28th january 2023 this one particular this this one so 30 days period is already over so when 30 days period is already over i'm i'm not going to get any discount okay because 30 days is already crossed 15th december to 15th january 2023 30 days is over so for this particular invoice this particular invoice no discount is applicable 
suppose I don't want to uh, clear this particular invoices I only want to clear this invoice so after the proposed discount deducting from 10,000 what is the amount assigned 9,500 but I could not calculate it manually in the calculator so I put only one rupee so what I have to do I have to click on this mountain and sun icon that is document overview here I will click on one rupee and now I will change it to 9500 right once I click on the 9500 I can go to the document simulate okay so it is asking for the exchange rate difference account right because exchange rate difference account uh, uh, related information it is asking I have to put some more customization because my company code is capable of posting the transaction in INR as well as in uh, parallelly in US dollar uh, sorry euro so that's why this configuration is also required I have to do this configuration then again I will try to post this transaction so <coughs> it is asking exchange rate difference account are incomplete for account 100 to 10 that means for this sundry creditor exchange rate related information configuration has not been done so the posting cannot be performed here i have to just double click on this error message sometimes in the sap system if you click on the error message it will always guide you to make the configuration so this screen allow me to proceed and do the configuration for exchange rate difference so click on this proceed button once I click on this proceed button this particular uh, area has to be configured that is document split for currency exchange click on CEX it, it will ask you the chart of account click on continue and uh, here I will click on just save once I click on save it will it will ask me what is the exchange difference GL account because you know that if there is a exchange difference while making the payment in foreign currency then there can be a gain or loss so that configuration it is compulsorily asking me why it is asking me because my company code I have configured the parallel processing of all the transactions in INR as well as euro because that was my scenario but Indian companies who are not dealing in foreign exchange they don't require that but in my uh, company code 7200 I have opted for the parallel currency euro so click on this drop down and click on continue it will guide me to the GL account so there is a GL account for an exchange gain account there is a GL account for an exchange loss account in some companies there can be a GL account called uh, foreign exchange difference account so <coughs> instead of using this separate GL account some companies use only one GL account for an exchange difference account where both the loss and gain will be reported and from the GL account as a accountant we can easily know that if there is a loss then it will be shown on the debit side and if there is a gain it will be credited debit all losses and expenses credit all incomes and gains so there can be only one GL account the GL account can be having a number starting with four or three whatever may be but it can be having the two sides so just for the sake of uh, customization let us use this one and click on save okay I don't have any intention to demonstrate any kind of because here there will be no foreign currency gains or loss because I am going to clear it in Indian currency so let us come back again again post the data so again post the data suppose I am posting it on say uh, 28th tomorrow itself uh, 
8122022 here is the bank data i don't know how much discount will be allowed let us put 1 rupee let us change the value date also 28th december 2022 this is the text that is clearing this is the vendor subsidiary gl number that is vendor number click on the process open item okay so i am entitled to get 10% discount i don't uh, want to make the clearing of all this i am just i want to concentrate only on the first line item uh, this line item one invoice 6013 here it is 9000 proposing but i have put only 1 rupee so click on the mountain and sun that is document overview so click on 1 rupee put 9000 then click on document simulate okay once i click on the document simulate see how the entry is generated <coughs> i have never used manually this gl account am i use this gl account while clearing the transaction no i have used only the bank related information and my vendor related information subsidiary gl information but this line item is automatically coming this gl account is automatically coming right how it is automatically coming in the last class i have shown you the demonstration where i have linked the discount received account there can be two types of discount account one is discount received another is discount allowed discount received is applicable in accounts payable and in the accounts receivable another gl account will be created under the expenses this is an income so it is started with 3 and automatically 1000 rupees also coming here how 1000 rupees is coming because the system knows that 10% discount you are entitled to but there is a lacking in this document what is the lacking in this document this particular line item the color is blue this two line items the color is black why it is blue because a mandatory this line item is generated automatically so when the line item is generated automatically and seen uh, it is shown in blue that means for that line item a mandatory field has not been populated what is the mandatory field if we if i click automatically the cursor is moving to this place that means for that extra line item which is created automatically i have never put any uh, narration or text okay so i can put the text here discount received and again i will go to the again i will go to this mountain and sun that is the display document overview right so once i go to the display document overview this blue line item is no more it is in black because the mandatory field is automatically posted then click on post right so now the document is showing 3013 that is the document type kz uh, for this transaction right so this is the way in which your discount uh, structure happens and the discount structure uh, what I have created it is capable of calculating the discount automatically taking into consideration the payment terms and uh, the line item is automatically generated the gl account is automatically populated and the amount of discount which was calculated in the sap system that is also appended in the fresh line item in the extra line item so this is the way in which your discount configuration terms of payment configuration is uh, demonstrated <coughs> so i will go to the next topic my next topic will be automatic payment program okay so my next topic will sir, be sir any question sir okay ask sir what is payment block uh see in the automatic payment program i will show you the payment block let us take an example suppose uh, i am just opening a excel sheet from there i will show you the payment block and i will also block some payment and i will demonstrate 
but let us understand the entire process of automatic payment program payment block then i will demonstrate <coughs> because without going through the detail funda we cannot directly jump into the customization because that will be uh, uh, very difficult to understand okay so i will discuss the payment terms and i will discuss the automatic payment their payment block will be discussed automatic payment program so i will i will discuss uh, what is payment block in between automatic payment program so what is the meaning of automatically automatic payment program let us understand suppose your organization will be having huge numbers of vendors your organization will be having huge numbers of vendors okay second one every vendor every vendor there are huge numbers of uh, invoices pending pending for payment right okay so in this case what happens one by one if we clear the vendors one by one and if we clear the vendors uh, taking into consideration suppose there is a vendor x limited okay this x limited will be having say 106 numbers of numbers of invoices pending okay 106 numbers of invoices pending so for these 106 numbers of invoices pending i want to pay this x limited but out of these 106 numbers of invoice pending, suppose 10 invoices has not to be paid today. Okay. In the automatic payment program, uh, manual payment, what is the difference between manual payment program and automatic payment program? This is the manual, uh, actually manual payment program is not a program at all. See, F-53 is the manual payment. What I do? I just go to this screen, put the document date, posting date, one by one your vendor. Because see, here only one vendor you can select. But suppose your organization will be having huge numbers of vendors. And every vendor there are huge numbers of invoice pending. And out of these invoices, you want to select 10 invoices who is uh, who is has not to be paid today suppose we are today we are running the automatic payment program when we run the automatic payment program then clearing of the invoices clearing of the payables will be automatic okay clearing of the payables will be automatic but this clearing, this type of clearing, what I did now, this is not automatic. F-53 is not, this is a manual clearing. In the manual clearing, there are some disadvantages. The disadvantage is you have to select one by one vendors and it takes a lot of time to clear. But there is a program in the SAP system through which you can automatically clear any numbers of vendors thousand numbers of vendors and say every vendor will be having hundreds of invoices at a glance by just running the automatic payment program the invoices will be cleared so when the invoice will be cleared the accounting entry will be generated as vendor account vendor debit to bank okay vendor debit to bank so this entry and this entry will be purely automatic this entry will be automatically generated second thing is the uh, red items or open items will be automatically converted into clear items suppose out of these 106 numbers of invoices you want to block 10 numbers of invoices 
which you do not want to pay today. This automatic payment program runs, uh, this is run by the company in uh, uh, periodical intervals. Say a company will be having the policy to pay on every Monday. So today, suppose today is Monday. So after seven days, again, you will run the program. So today we don't want to clear 10 numbers of invoice. There is some issues or there is some instructions so that these will be paid on next Monday or some subsequent date basing on the information of the authority. But in the automatic payment program, if we run, then all the 106 numbers of pending invoices will be cleared for this vendor. So before running the automatic payment program, we have to block the selective invoices. Once we block the selective invoices, then whenever we will run the automatic payment program, this invoices will be omitted from the system. The system will not clear these 10 numbers of invoices. Let us go to and see where the blocking has to be done. The transaction code is FBL1N. Okay, this is the vendor. Let us see the open items. Okay, suppose these are the open items. Out of these open items, these three items are overdue. But these two items are not due. So if these items are not due or some special instruction is there, I have to block these vendors for payment. So I can uh, click here and I can click on change display or change mode. Once I click here, then this area is converted into uh, previously it was gray it was not allowing to make any changes now there is a area called payment block if I go to and I make the block blocking of these invoices then if I select a and click on save then this invoice will not be cleared through the automatic payment program so n numbers of invoices if I want to block I can block it easily so that this invoices are not to be automatically cleared whenever I run the automatic payment program. Okay, so uh, today I will just uh, start the configuration of the automatic payment program and finally I will show you how the end users will do the automatic payment program. These are consisting of the configurations as well as end user activity. In the configuration, I will make the settings of the automatic payment program. Without doing the settings, my automatic payment program will never run. Right? So once I do the customization or settings, accordingly, my automatic payment program will be possible. Instead of using one by one clearing of one by one vendor, I can avoid I can pass all the invoices, but before finally running the program, I want to have the consideration, decide what invoices has to be blocked. I can block those invoices for clearing and rest of the invoices can be cleared through the automatic payment program. In the automatic payment program, you can select, suppose any organization having three bank accounts three bank accounts the first bank say SBI another is say UBI <coughs> another is say SDFC in the SBI suppose you want to run the automatic payment program through the state bank of India because from that bank you are paying to the vendors suppose this practically this bank will be having the balance of say five crores Okay, but suppose you want to utilize only say one crore through automatic payment program. So you have to out of this five crore balance in the in the uh, customization or in the settings you can make a limit that clearing will happen to the extent of one crore. So beyond one crore the amount will not be utilized from this bank so that settings is also allowed during the automatic payment program you can make the limit 
similarly suppose some of your invoices as very uh, minor values minor values okay minor values say 100 rupees or uh, 200 rupees this types of invoices are there this types of uh, invoices or payables are there but there is a policy of the organization that say below 1000 rupees no automatic no automatic pro payment program okay because these are small small invoices these are the petty invoices so this petty invoices can be cleared by a petty cashier so these invoices though it is a liability it can be create it can be cleared by petty cashier okay so how this petty cashier or cash desk will be there i will also demonstrate how this petty cashier will clear this small small invoices so in the automatic payment program settings the company can decide uh, that uh, below uh, what amount no automatic payment program will be applicable so in the settings if i make the settings that below 1000 rupees no automatic payment program will be there then what happened even if you will be having huge numbers of invoices see <coughs> uh, suppose you have said that uh, below 1000 there is no automatic payment program so even if even if you have uh, less than 1000 invoices and showing as open items and if you run the automatic payment program during periodical intervals it will never clear those small small invoices or small small payables below 1000 rupees so all these settings can be decided by the company and the person who is in charge of the customization uh, of the automatic payment program they have to set the program accordingly right then another thing another thing is whenever you make the automatic payment program one payment advice payment advice has to be generated so what is payment advice suppose you are paying a vendor right after paying the vendor you should make a letter letter to vendor okay what letter you will make a correspondence to the vendor that such and such invoices are cleared okay so you, uh, the system will automatically generate a payment advice in the payment advice it will mention which invoices are cleared on which date so date of automatic payment program will be there and details of the invoices which are cleared the list will also be prepared by the system automatically suppose you have huge numbers of vendors say 200 vendors so 200 numbers of uh, payment advice equal number of payment advice will be created by the system sap system and that payment advice will consist of the summary of or the list of the invoices which are cleared so 200 numbers of payment advice 300 numbers of payment advice can be uh, generated in the sap system without any hindrances so this automatic payment program is used normally by cash rich companies or the companies which will be having a fair and prompt payment policies so uh, sometimes also this kinds of payment program is required where there is huge huge numbers of vendors and every vendor will be having huge numbers of pending invoices or invoices so before that let us do the basic customizations of automatic payment program and finally all the customizations are over then we will uh, as a end user activity we will run the automatic payment program and we'll see how the things are cleared right one thing i can say you suppose 
uh, for a particular vendor some of the invoices are not due like this invoice these two invoices are not due because uh, due date is not there still the uh, what is the due date suppose 45 days the last date is 45 days up to 45 days you can uh, postpone the payment so 45 days has not come to this two numbers of invoices so whenever you will run the automatic payment program these two invoices which are not due it will be automatically ignored okay see this blocking is not required in these two invoices suppose though this invoice is due actually in normal case blocking is not required for these two invoices because it will not never pay because due date is not there so automatic payment program will consider only the due or overdue invoices but out of these overdue invoices or the invoices which are just due suppose your organization wants to block this particular invoice which is though overdue so in this case also you can do this practically what happens organization have to block the invoices uh, those invoices which are due or over or overdue but this payment has to be has not to be made due to certain reason just a minute <coughs> okay so let us have again fbl 1m fbl 1m so this is my company code this is my vendor number so let us click here suppose this if i do the automatic payment program instantly these invoices will be cleared automatically but out of this suppose my management wants that i don't have to pay this one so i am just blocking it i will use a payment block there are predefined payment block i can use blocked for payment save it and come back so if I do so, in the report it will be shown as overdue. However, th the blocking is already applicable to this invoice, right? Uh, suppose <coughs> I want to change the layout. Let us see. let us see the blocking indicator whether it is there or not there i can i want to just show in the report see this is payment block right suppose uh, here i want to see okay so see now i change the layout Suppose you have 1000 numbers of invoices for this Trident Industries Limited. I apply the layout payment block. So from here itself, I can see that this particular invoice is blocked for payment. So what about this one? I have also blocked it, but it is not showing. Let us come back and again, again go to the same place. <coughs> only one invoice is showing as block another invoice is not showing in the display column even if I change the layout let us see it again I am locking this is my vendor so I want to okay so I want to see the blocked invoices let us see payment date okay this is payment block 
see the payment block actually in the report itself yes now it is uh, it was not say reset actually you have to just come back and again go so that see now out of all these invoices these two numbers of invoices is shown as blocked so you can just change the layout you can export this file and filter out and report to the management that these invoices are blocked for payment right so blocking uh, is made to avoid the automatic clearance of those invoices during the automatic payment program so that these are uh, unless and until you will unblock this will never be considered for payment so how to unblock same you will go here change you will just remove this one payment block and click on save you will just come back again refresh again go to the layout permanently also you can make a layout for yourself i will show you okay here it is payment block i want to show it here itself where it is there no payment block i want to show here itself click on the left arrow click on the copy see this this gone so now this was unblocked once it is unblocked then whenever you will go for the automatic payment program then this invoice will be hence cleared so this is the way in which you can control your clearing activities so clearing activity is such a way see this blocking of invoices and unblocking of the invoices normally decision is taken at a higher level and the person who is who is there at the higher level they decide and they block it whenever any any situation comes they can unblock it and that will be considered for the next automatic payment run so now let us go to the customization area so for customization of automatic payment method i can go to the spro sap reference img i will go to the financial accounting new accounts receivable and accounts payable then i will go to the business transactions then i will go to the outgoing payment see there are three things here outgoing payment global settings manual outgoing payment automatic outgoing payment right three things are there so now i will do the settings for automatic outgoing payment program or oh, sorry automatic outgoing payments due to who is my automatic payment program will be carried on so i will click here and here payment method bank selection for payment program is there i will again click here and i can do the customization one by one this is one way another way is straight forward i can go to a transaction code f110 okay actually this transaction is used for the automatic payment program but now i will do the customization itself in this screen so i will go to the environment then i will go to the maintain configuration right so here also i can do the configuration and make the automatic payment program or i can make the customization of the automatic payment program here itself okay so same there are two interface two ways in which you can do the customization you can directly use f110 slash n f110 in the f110 screen there is a menu in the menu there is called environment and uh, click on maintain configuration so here you will customize payment program customization of payment program you can do here or you can do the customization here itself so set of all company codes for payment transaction the same thing is here also uh, that is all company codes all company codes means set of all company codes for payment transaction here is the paying company code now here is also you will found set up paying company code for payment transaction same thing so 
let us prefer to do it here itself okay so i will click on all company codes right so all the company codes in the sap system in the sap server that is automatically appearing here how many company codes are there there are 124 numbers of company codes appearing now i will do my company code uh, customization for my company code for activation of automatic payment program because manual payment program i know it very well but there are some disadvantages of manual payment program due to which i prefer to go for the automatic payment program in future and for that purpose i am doing the settings i am doing the customization so click on the new entries button right so here i have to put my company code name 7200 right <coughs> now after 7200 in the control tab there are two things one is sending company code another is paying company code what does it mean it may happens that in some cases one company code uh, the vendor supplies the materials or provide the service to company code x limited but the paying company code is another one suppose there are two numbers of company code one is holding company another is subsidiary company the or there are two sister concerns that means there are two company codes one company code the bill is raised by the vendor but the payment is released by another company code this is though this is a rare practice uh, but this practice can be there uh, one is uh, you will make the bill in favor of a company code but you will get the payment from another company code on behalf of that company right and uh, within that two company codes there will be some kind of uh, payment uh, uh, interchange mechanism there will be some uh, amount will, which can be settled within these two companies later on for the y limited against the x limited it may happens that there are two company codes one company code paid to the vendor but bill is generated the vendor generate the bill against another company code but these two company code later on settled that means the company code who pays the vendor claims the money from the another company code and that is settled later on so in this case what happened in my case i am making the simple settings simple setting means the sending company code and the paying company code they are very same okay so i choose both the things as same other things i am not considering here and uh, i click on save save in my request then again come back so first customization this is over then come to the second customization that is paying company code here also 124 numbers of company code is coming then uh, i will click on uh, I will click on this new entries. In the new entries, I will put the company code name 7200. Okay. And here, I will make the settings. See, automatic payment program, I am demonstrating you for the outgoing payment, not for the incoming payment. Outgoing payment means the payment what I am going to make to the vendor. But I have already uh, told you that some companies, they ignore the small, small payments in the automatic payment ROM. Suppose the company has decided that 1000 rupees minimum amount for automatic, uh, for minimum amount for outgoing payment, that is 1000 rupees. That means below 1000 rupees payables or invoices has not to be considered in the automatic payment ROM okay so this i am ignoring because for incoming payment i am not setting the automatic payment program because i am paying it not for receiving any money so i ignore this so minimum amount for outgoing payment is 1000 no exchange rate differences that means uh, if i am paying in indian currency 
no exchange rate difference will be applicable because I'm, I'm I will go I will pay only INR so exchange rate uh, differences will not be there and I click on forms whenever I will create an automatic payment program then a payment advice will be generated in addition to the clearing of the invoices so that payment advice can be prepared by ABAPERS having the logo of the company code who made the payment because payment advice is nothing but this is a letter or communication by the paying company to the vendor okay so definitely the company code will be having a logo or icon who is making the payment and uh, the script script means in the letter there must be a script that such and such invoices dear uh, sir such and such invoices these are the following invoices which are already cleared by us so please check in your bank account so that kind of script is also there but we are not the programmers so we are relying on the predefined script which is there in the SAP system there will be no logo at all but my payment advice will be having a predefined seats so in the form for payment advice I will click on the drop down I will click on the international okay now I will select payment advice note so this is the by default script or form for my payment advice then I will go to the EDI accompanying sheet EDI accompanying sheet means some companies they in addition to the payment advice they create a electronically sheet which is sent to the banker for paying to the vendor okay so bank banker will be given a sheet in that seat the details of the account number and amount of the vendor will be there and every bank they require the specific format in which we have to supply the data and data will be generated from the SAP itself but the most important thing is you must update the correct vendor account number in the vendor master but we have not uh, uh, put any vendor bank account number in our vendor master but if it will be there correct vendor account bank account number a script is generated or the electronic data interchange will be generated in addition to the payment advice and payment advice will be sent to the vendor by email for their information and this EDI accompanying sheet will be generated for my banker so though I am not able to create any EDI accompanying sheet but there is a facility to create a seat as per the banker's need or there is a predefined seat here itself you can also use that but normally it is always as per the requirement of the bank if you will be having uh, in state bank of india they require a particular format if it will be having union bank of india they may need some different format so uh, whenever any banker will require a different format by uh, the help of the ABAPERS you can create a script as for the requirement you can also create a script of the payment advice as per your needs of the company right then I will click on the sender details right <coughs> so in the sender details I will have the who has send or who has uh, making the payment the letter head footer signature because any uh, EDI accompanying seat or payment advice there must be a signatory so all these details must be defined here so I am using this standard text so I will use this letter head uh, in the letter head also uh, say I am putting this letter header footer signature text as per my requirement the standard uh, uh, say uh, I am putting header see these are pro actually these are programmed I am just making the uh, things 
but these are programmed actually this 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 cannot be uh, done by myself but the programmer uh, will make a script for this one and it has to be typed here it has to be just linked here supposed authorized signatory <coughs> So these things will be there. It can be also PDF best. So the programmers see logo is also there. The company logo can be attached here. So all this this area is particularly the area of the programmer actually. So let us just have a sample of this. But the most important thing from finance point of view is this one. That is minimum amount for outgoing payment. Small payments will not be considered at all. Click on save. <coughs> okay so my second customization is over then come to the third customization payment methods in country okay payment methods in country every country will uh, country to country we have to create the method of payment see in the country india which is by default coming there is already uh, C for check payment, S for SIL auto payment, T for bank transfer, Z for SIL auto payment. So there are many payment methods which are created. I can also create my own method. Click on the new entries button. I am putting the country India. Payment method is a single digit, alphabetic or numeric or alpha numeric. numeric. So I am putting the payment method say O. O means uh, say online transfer. And description I am giving online transfer. This is just the identification. You can do anything. Okay. You can also use A, B, C like that. It is up to you. So description is online transfer for <coughs> 7200. Again, I am putting the same online transfer for 720. Okay. Here, there are two radio buttons outgoing payment, incoming payment. I am selecting the outgoing payment. Here, there are different checkboxes are there. I am putting bank transfer. Right. Then, I will come to the third area posting details. Whenever I will make the clearing. What document type will because clearing document will be generated automatically. So whenever that automatic clearing document will be generated, what type of document it will be KZ because KZ is the payment document. I have declared I have created a number range under the document type KZ. So that is the document type I will going to use. But any company if they have any other document types for clearing uh, for their clearing document then they can use that but I have used the document type KZ so I am using KZ here right so then I will click on save right then I will click on currencies allowed in my automatic payment program or the payment method O which currencies will be allowed obviously my currency is INR <coughs> click on save right so this customization is also over then I will go to payment method in company code right so payment method in company code I have to create here click on the new entries button the paying company code is 7200 payment method I have already created the payment method online transfer for 7200 then minimum amount I, I put 1000 but what is the maximum amount suppose any company code has decided that up to 1 crore you can make the automatic payment program beyond 1 crore then suppose you will be having some other considerations so let us put the limit here So now I select 
payment or due date checkbox then click on the form data radio button in the form data radio button also there will be some scripts here actually these are the abapers area let us define predefined scripts uh, use it i am using the pre predefined script for payment medium uh, then i select next form a uh, next form is not required only one form is sufficient then drawer on the form say uh, for for 7200 or max pro industries max pro max pro industries limited okay so this will be there okay so uh, the person who is making uh, for max pro industries limited i can have authorized secretary okay so this much click on save save in my request right so this is the way in which i have configured the four numbers then click on the bank determination what is bank determination i have already told you that if you will be having several banks but you have decided to make the automatic payment program from, from a specific bank so i will decide for from which company code which bank i have to use the automatic payment program or i will use the money so select 7200 click on the ranking order click on the new entries button ranking order means suppose there are three banks if from one bank the money is over then you can also automatically it will pick up the second bank so first of all you will select the payment method that is online transfer currency inr rank order 1 select the house bank house bank configuration is already over we have two numbers of house bank let us select the house bank this one first one we are using the only one then click on save if you have uh, two or three numbers of bank on a ranking you can do the ranking if the money is over from this bank then second bank will be automatically utilized by the system select this one click on the bank account click on the new entries button select your house bank this one then uh, select your payment method o currency inr then use the account id <coughs> this is my account id then bank sob account which gl account i will use because this house bank i have a specific gl account which gl account is there this one sbi current account sbi current account is linked with my house bank sbi then click on save then select this sbi and click on the available amount suppose in my sbi we have huge numbers of funds but we are going to use only the limited numbers of funds limited amount of fund and within how many days this fund will be used suppose i am putting 999 that means up to the uh, there there will be unlimited period in which this funds will be used suppose i put the available amount suppose my available amount is say uh, 50 lakhs okay even if in my house bank more amount is there but here i can restrict it is restrict it to 50 lakhs only so automatic payment program will consider 50 lakhs for the payments so this is the last configuration of my automatic payment program okay house bank is not required because house bank configuration i have already completed so in the next class i will show you how you run the automatic payment program and how the system is automatically clearing and before clearing how to uh, uh, review the invoices whatever invoices you want to block how to block it so that it will not be considered for the clearing okay 
so in the next class on tomorrow i will demonstrate to you the end user activities of the automatic payment program okay so good night to all of you i am sending the recording please do the practice okay thank you so much